What's up, witches? It's Megan. Welcome back to my channel. I'm glad that you're here. Um, today, I want to talk about different methods of defensive magic and what defensive magic actually is. Before I do that, make sure that you've entered my giveaway. Um, I announced last week that I am hosting a giveaway. It's going to be going until the end of May and it's open worldwide. Anyone can enter. I'm giving away either a custom made altar cloth or a personalized guided meditation. The winner will get to choose. The winner will also be chosen at random through Rafflecopter and I will do that live. So yeah, click the link in the description or in the show notes and enter the giveaway. Or if you don't want to look there, go to roundthecauldron.com slash giveaway and you can find it there. I also want to let you know that this is the start of batch recording videos and podcast episodes because life is about to get really, really hectic, um, especially with the move all the way across the country that we're planning next month. And I've just got so much, so many other things going on um, that I am starting the process of batch recording. So these episodes and these videos might be shorter than normal, but... I will return to my regularly scheduled whatever uh, when we get in Florida or when we get to Florida and we get everything set up and ready to go. So anyways, on to defensive magic. So when you think about defensive magic, I'm not sure what comes to your mind, but for me, defensive magic is essentially a magical form of self-defense, you know, like uh, karate or just those self-defense classes, or even pepper spray that uh, many people carry around, myself included. Defensive magic is simply the magical form of self-defense. Defensive magic is also a really good way to practice your energy work. Since it's something that can affect you personally, and it's normally something that you can feel throughout the day as you're doing it, um, it's a good way to practice your energy work to know whether or not what you're doing is working. Now, I don't wanna go into this topic with the mindset of you have to practice defensive magic because you're gonna be attacked and you're gonna be cursed or anything like that. That is 90% of the time, that's not the case. 90% of the time you think you're cursed, but you're really not and it's you're doing it to yourself, but that's a topic for another day. So. Going into talking about defensive magic, I don't want you to think that it's something that you need to do because an attack is inevitable. That's just not the case. I want you to think about defensive magic as a preemptive way to protect yourself, your home, your objects, your family from any unwanted energy. Okay, that, that being the key thing, unwanted energy. That could mean unwanted uh, blessings, unwanted uh, baneful magic. It could also just be that you're around someone who is who you would consider to be like a psychic vampire, right? They just suck the energy out of everything. Defensive magic is a good way to protect yourself and those around you from those types of situations. It can also be a good way to protect yourself and those around you from people who, you know, you might be around and they just exude all this excess energy. Maybe they're really stressed out. That sort of energy has a way of just rolling off of people and permeating the space that they are in. So defensive magic is a good way to protect against those sorts of situations as well. You can also use defensive magic as a way to protect against physical damage or physical harm. And that obviously would mean doing some sort of defensive magic, like I'm going to be doing, um, on a, like a pillow or a sachet or a charm to leave in your car to protect your car against harm, you know, car accidents, um, breaking down, anything like that. The same can be done for homes and people and different places. It's, you know, the, the range of defensive magic is unlimited. You can use defensive magic essentially on just about everything. So in the same way that there are 
many different types of offensive magic, which we'll end up talking about in another episode, there are many different methods of defensive magic, and I want to talk about a few. I want to talk about just a couple of them. Since defensive magic is normally all about protection, um, there are a few different techniques that I want to talk about when it comes to performing defensive magic. These are going to be warding, shielding, things like a return to sender spell, and ways that you can enchant or charm objects. The first one is warding. Warding involves placing sort of like an energetic barrier around something that you're trying to protect. Typically this is your home or your place of business, but it can be applied to any physical location. You can even place wards um, if you're like in the park, you know, place wards in certain areas and it gives you an energetic barrier. Wards can also include different parameters, different things that you want to allow inside the ward and different things that you want absolutely nothing to do with. Wards are typically very easy to learn how to cast, but they do often require regular upkeep. Um, could be daily, weekly, or even monthly, depending on what you feel is necessary for that energetic barrier. The easiest comparison, I guess, for warding to really help you understand the purpose of it and how it works is if you think of like a window screen. In most places that I've lived, anytime there is a window that can be opened, it also has a screen. And the screen is there so you can leave the window open and keep out pests, you know, bugs, um, animals, depending on where you live. You know, here we wouldn't want the rock trucks coming in the house or the stray cats or anything like that. So the screen is there as a method of protection. It's a barrier between the outside world and your home. Now, as long as the screen doesn't have any damage to it, it's not going to need any regular upkeep. But think about if, you know, there was a, an animal that was trying to get inside your home through the screen through your window, right? And they're scratching at it and they are just tearing it up and it's got holes in it and everything, then you would need to repair or replace it. Well, warding is the same concept. So if you put your wards up around your home and, you know, you don't leave very often, nobody comes over very often, your wards aren't going to need a lot of upkeep. But if you're constantly in and out um, from your home to public and back, or if you have a lot of visitors, then your wards are going to need more upkeep because you will bring you will bring energy and just gunk with you um, when you go from public back to your home. And the same thing is said for other people and even animals. You want to make sure that you are able to keep up with your wards, and this is especially true if you have lots of people in and out, or if there is often a lot of tension in the home that can put strain on the wards too if someone is coming in and out and they're stressed out or they're angry or anything like that. That can affect how the ward functions. Now the purpose of a ward is to keep out the unnecessary energy, anything that is either directed towards your home on purpose or on accident or something that someone brings with them. So this would be effective against visitors that are stressed out, as I said, or are angry or who deal with the public a lot and don't have their own defensive shielding technique, which we'll talk about next. Um, those wards are, are helpful. A lot of the times, most witches, as far as I'm aware, use wards as a protection against unwanted energetic attacks. Those are going to be things like curses and hexes or um, bindings and things, things like that that we just want to protect ourselves from. But wards can be used as a general protective barrier around a physical location. My favorite method of warding, and I mean... This is warding for me. Some of these might be different depending on how long you've practiced or what your specific words for these are. I guess I should have mentioned this at the beginning. Um, 
but oh well. <laughs> so my favorite method of warding is something that I call a waterfall ward. And I do this with a wash, so like like a floor wash, but for the doors and the windows. And I take it and I will use my rag, let it drip, but not, you know, obviously not get water everywhere. But I will let it be to where it's dripping and then I start from the top of my door or window and I let the water cascade down to the floor. And I continue wiping. I do this process on all the doors, all the windows, anything that can be considered an entrance into the home. So this would also include um, like animal doors if they're not in an actual door. Anything that is like a vent that goes from outside to inside or inside to outside, I would do those too. The whole purpose of the waterfall ward for me is that anyone entering my home through any entrance will automatically be cleansed. They will have that uh, excess energy and stuff that I don't want in my home just washed away by the waterfall ward. Now, this is something that does have to be done regularly depending on who is coming in and out of your home, but it is one of the easier ones that I have found. Make sure you're subscribed to me on YouTube because Thursday I will be showing you exactly how I make my wash for my waterfall ward and I will show you how I do it. The next form of defensive magic that I want to mention is shielding. Now, shielding is something that I learned how to do a long time ago because I am very susceptible to the energies of other people. And I do consider myself to be an empath and shielding is one of the first techniques that an empath should learn, in my opinion. Um, but shielding involves creating an energetic barrier around yourself. Now, this form of defensive magic relies heavily on um, energy work. So, it's something that even if you're not interested in doing all the time, it's a good thing to practice if you're new to doing energy work. And I think everybody should learn how to shield anyways to keep unwanted energy away from you, but also to contain your own energy so you don't end up leaking it onto everyone else. So you can actually practice shielding at home. Um, the best place, in my opinion, to do it is somewhere quiet where you won't be disturbed, where you can focus. And if you're interested, I'll, I'll give you my technique right now, um, especially for when I first started learning how to do this. I think this is a very helpful thing to do. Um, so you're going to sit in a quiet place, close your eyes, relax, focus on your breath in and out. Okay. And then as you do this and you focus on your breath, you're going to picture a ball of energy in the pit of your stomach. Okay. Right in the middle and not just not in front, but actually physically inside. Okay. This ball of energy is going to start inside of you and it's coming from your own energy and it's something that you're going to grow to expand to form a sphere around you. And the way to do this is gather that energy within you and with each inhale, focus on expanding that ball of energy. And with each exhale, just relax a little more and just keep your focus. And then on the inhale, you're going to expand it some more and it's going to take some practice. You know, it's not something that you're going to be able to do right away. And if you are, that's amazing and you have a real gift for energy work. But this took me some time to practice. But with each inhale, you're going to expand that ball of energy until it forms a circle around you. And this is your energetic shield. Now, that's a very basic, very basic method of learning how to do an energy shield. Over time, with more practice, you can add layers to it. You can do it faster. You know, there are even techniques out there where the outside layer is water and then you have a fire layer and there's like uh, layers of steel and metal. It just depends on what you want and what you can manage to do with your own energetic shield. But again, I think learning how to shield is an important technique for everyone to learn how to do. And then... You can also do something that I call a return to sender. And this is a, this is a spell that you would do whenever you feel like um, 
you are being influenced by outside energies on purpose when you feel like someone is directing some form of magic to you. Um, you can also enchant objects, jewelry, clothing, anything of the sort that you wear on a regular basis for this specific purpose. And the whole point of it is that what you enchant will capture that energy and then send it back to the person that sent it your way. And I think of this like the saying that we used to have when we were kids, when someone says something mean and nasty to you, it was, what was it? I'm rubber, you're glue. Whatever you say bounces off me and sticks back on you. Or I think that's how it went. I don't remember. It's something like that. But that's essentially the whole purpose of a return to sender spell. If you're interested in learning more about a return to sender spell, let me know. If you're watching on YouTube, leave it in the comments below. If you're listening to the podcast, reach out to me through social media and I can do an entire video on how to do a return to sender spell. Now, the last form of defensive magic that I want to talk about is that little tidbit that I had said about enchanting objects. Besides enchanting jewelry or clothing or something that you wear, you can spell and charge other items for use in your home, in your car, as I had mentioned at the beginning, um, or just to carry with you to use as defensive magic, whether it be a return to sender or a shield or a ward or just something that is there to help with protection. Um, some of these things include crystals, spell jars, witches balls. Um, I know there are so many other things out there. You can even use a poppet. So this is just going to depend on your skills or what you have access to or what you're comfortable carrying around or using in your home. I know for uh, like spell jars, typically what they do is they act as decoys and the same thing can be said for poppets, but they act as decoys and normally they have some piece of you, whether it be fingernails, hair, um, urine, blood, you know, that's something that represents you, something that is a piece of you. And it acts as a decoy so that if someone does direct something towards you, that jar or that poppet has the intention of sort of intervening and capturing that energy so that it doesn't actually affect you. It affects the spell jar. And then if you have access to certain crystals, different crystals can act as protectors and um, like absorbers of any unwanted energy that's directed to you or that just happens to be in the area. Good crystals for this include hematite, tourmaline, and amethyst. So as I said, defensive magic is just a really good technique to learn. Um, that doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to learn defensive magic and then you should anticipate an attack 24-7. We're not spies. We're not you know, nobody is targeting us specifically like that, but it is helpful when it comes to being in public or dealing with a lot of people or traveling, you know, it, it can be helpful. And I think it's something that everyone should learn how to do. So I hope you found the information in this episode helpful. Um, like I said, if you have any questions, comments, or any other techniques that you like to use for defensive magic, let me know. If you're watching on YouTube, you can leave them in the comments below. Podcast listeners, you can leave them on um, the show notes page for this episode, or you can reach out through Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. All those links will be in the description and in the show notes. And I will see you next time. Bye for now. As always, I would like to thank my patrons for their support. Thank you, Jess. And thank you, Rose, from WiccanHomestead.com. If you want to help support Round the Cauldron and all of the work that I do here, head over to Patreon at patreon.com slash roundthecauldron, or you can get something from my shop at etsy.com slash shop slash roundthecauldron.